Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at the new 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 processor. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 800 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So I just about two hours ago got my new 13-inch MacBook Pro with the new M1 processor. I took it out of the box immediately and set it up and went about testing it. So one of the first things I wanted to do was run some benchmarks. I had already run some benchmarks on two other Macs. One is a 2016 Intel i5 MacBook Pro. They look very similar. The same exact body and only slight changes like an actual escape key on the new one. And also my 2019 Mac Pro. So first I ran Geekbench scores. And this tests a variety of different things and gives you a total score. So for single processor use my old MacBook Pro scored 738. My really powerful new Mac Pro with 12 cores scored 1108. And the new 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 processor 1720. So for single processor use this new MacBook Pro which is supposed to be the low end 13 inch MacBook Pro with only two Thunderbolt ports. This one beats the Mac Pro. Now multiprocessor scores were a little different. The old 2016 MacBook Pro scored 1660. My new MacBook Pro with its 12 cores scored over 12,000. Where did the M1 come in? Well right in the middle at 7,335. Now of course I have 12 processors in the Mac Pro so it makes sense that it will score higher. And also the tower costs several times what this MacBook Pro costs. So it better beat it. But it didn't really beat it by that much. Okay, so those are just numbers. How about some real world tests? Well, I put together a few tests. The first one was in iMovie. I took three 4K video clips. I brought them into iMovie. I put two different transitions in there. And I put three different filters in place, one on each of these clips. And then I exported it. I exported it at 4K, high and better quality. It's about 56 seconds of video in total. It took my 2016 MacBook Pro 2 minutes and 21 seconds to export this. Now my Mac Pro not only has the 12 cores but also has a really fast GPU with 16 gigs of memory in the GPU. So it took only 54 seconds to render it. And the new MacBook Pro with the M1 chip it took 1 minute and 12 seconds. It almost beat my Mac Pro. So the next real world test I did is I created a really complex numbers spreadsheet. It has 100,000 rows. And it does a calculation in every cell of each of those rows and a bunch of totals and things like that. I changed one number in it to force it to recalculate everything. On the old MacBook Pro it took 5.5 seconds for that recalculation. On my Mac Pro it took 3.5 seconds for that recalculation. And on the new M1 1.8 seconds. Now to make it more intense I sorted by the text in the second column there. So it's 100,000 rows getting sorted. And then after it's finished sorting my calculations are complex enough that it needs to recalculate everything. So the times were 22 seconds for the old MacBook Pro, 17 seconds for the Mac Pro, but only 8 seconds for the M1. So how about the web? I haven't heard that much about the speed of Safari. So I decided to test Safari. But it's really hard to find things that are slow enough to test. So I did find a JavaScript test online that's meant to test JavaScript browser speed. And the test happens really fast but it does give you a actual number of how long it took. So on the old MacBook Pro it took 0.022 seconds to run. On my Mac Pro it took 0.013 seconds. And it took exactly the same amount of time, 0.013 seconds on the new M1. So it tied with my Mac Pro for Safari JavaScript speed. So I did one more test. I brought up Affinity Photo. I wanted to do something that wasn't a Mac app. And I tested using a filter there that takes a little time to set up. On my Mac Pro, probably because of its powerful GPU, it takes 2 seconds to set up this haze removal tool. So I figure it's looking at all the different pixels in the image. Now on my old MacBook Pro it takes a lot longer. It takes 20 seconds while it sets this tool up for you to use it. And on the new M1 it fell in the middle there at 12 seconds. So my tests do show what other people are finding. That the new M1 processor is really really fast. Now all of these apps that I've been using are universal apps. And you can tell by getting info on the app and it shows you there it's a universal app. So that means it's compiled for both Intel and for the M1 chip. But I wanted to see an app that wasn't compiled for M1. So I used my Creative Cloud account and grabbed Photoshop. 
And I didn't really have a good way to benchmark things but it seemed pretty responsive and everything worked just fine. Now another thing I wanted to test out was running iOS apps. This is the big new feature that you could run iOS apps on your Mac. Now I was able to go to my own games and pick one out in particular that I was curious to see if it would run and how it would look. And it worked great. It works just like it does on the iPad. No problems. But other apps I've tested didn't work quite so well. The window was really small so it was hard to play. Like a lot of other developers I'm going to go through some of those apps and make sure I uncheck Available for Mac for those. Now I tried some other games. I was disappointed I couldn't find too many of them. A lot of the most popular games just didn't seem to be available. The way you get to them is you go to the Mac App Store and then you search for a game and then it will show you Mac apps but you can switch to looking for iOS and iPad apps. But if you don't see it there it probably means the developer said nope I don't want it available on the Mac. Now I think the main reason for that may be that it doesn't work well on the Mac. Maybe there are issues that they need to fix and then they will make it available on the Mac. Or maybe it will never be available on the Mac because it uses multi-touch or other things that really need the screen or some other thing that has to do with the iPad or iPhone. I was disappointed to see that it looks like apps like Instagram and TikTok are not available as well as some of the top games. But I was able to find some of the games I played and they worked perfectly right there on my Mac. And it was kind of bizarre to be playing them there on my Mac screen in a window instead of on my iPad. So that's it. I'll continue to test. I do notice it does wake up from sleep instantly and everything seems to work just as it normally should. So there's probably not too much to see here except just enjoying the really great performance of the new Apple M1 processor. But if you have any questions or want me to try something out ask me in the comments and I'll try it if I can. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.